open. Put that silly comic book away. Stand up straight and act like a mensch. This comic book is not silly. This is the first Spider-Man comic book. It is probably worth a fortune. Listen, Ben. I want you to go out and find a job. But mother, none of my friends have to work. Your lazy friends are rich. You have to save for college. And we can't make ends meet anymore on my job as manager at Paymart. Don't worry, Mom. If I need money for college, I will take out student loans. Someday those student loans will catch up with you and bury you in a mountain of debt. And when they do, I will be a rich Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. What makes you think you can make it as a reporter? I just won a Junior Press Award, didn't I? Why don't you just go into engineering? They are begging for engineers. I want to be a writer. I don't want to be an engineer. Fine. Write the great American novel. But I will not have you sitting around the house all summer long reading comic books. May I speak to Mr. Benjamin Hedges, please? This is he. My name is Maxine Sinclair. I wanted to personally congratulate you on winning the Santa Fe Daily News Junior Press Award. Hey mom, it's the publisher of the Santa Fe Daily News. She is such a bitch. That story you wrote about the homecoming queen was brilliant. Thank you. But did you happen to read any of my hard news stories? The homecoming queen story that you wrote got our judges very hard. <laughs> I am serious. Yes, we did glance at them. But people don't want to read hard news anymore, darling. They want sex. Well, I guess you know what people want. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> Tell me, Ben. Are you really serious about a career in newspapers? I've always wanted to be a reporter. More than anything. So? You want to be a reporter, do you, Ben? I think you want a little piece of the adventure in the mystique, don't you? The fact of the matter is, there are no openings in the newsroom at this time, but there are other opportunities. What kind of opportunities? Ben, darling, why don't you stop by the newspaper this afternoon and we'll talk about it. Thanks, Miss Sinclair. I would love to come by. Great. I look forward to meeting you. Well, what do you know? Maxine Sinclair just offered me a job at the Daily News. I don't trust her. She's fired half the reporters since she bought the paper. The Daily News is a rag. It's a pathetic excuse for a newspaper. I mean, for heaven's sakes. Where has all the local news gone? What do you mean by local news? The new golf course that's sucking up the drinking water. That's local news. The gas station with the leaky storage tank. That's local news. The high school production of South Pacific and the kid who broke the four minute mile. That's local news too. But none of these stories are going to find their way into Maxine Sinclair's paper because all Maxine cares about are dog shows and beauty pageants. So, what you're saying is? Do you want to know what real local news is? Read the Morning Star. That's local news. The Morning Star is a newspaper that is given away for free. It doesn't have a comic section. It doesn't even have a horoscope. The Daily News, on the other hand, is fat and sassy. Fortune 500. Big time. Track full of guns, prostitution and cigarette advertising. This is my backdoor ticket to success. Dear, if your heart is set on working at the Daily News, then be my guest. Just don't say that I didn't warn you. Hey, thanks mom. Oh no, I'm running late. I've got to go. Bye. that boy. I swear. Just like his father. God rest his soul. Newspapers of all things.
Miss Sinclair. Yes. What is it? Miss Sinclair, I'm Ben Hedges. We spoke on the phone. You offer me a job? Ben. Oh yeah, Ben Hedges. My new boy toy. What did you call me? <coughs> My newspaper needs fresh, young blood. You'll make a perfect pit bull, won't you, Ben? Pit bull? That's what we call our team members, Ben. I want you to work in dispatch. What's dispatch? You meet with your client and show them their advertisement. Then they proofread it and make corrections. Then you bring it back here. There is nothing to it. That's not exactly what I had in mind. I want to write. Don't you understand? I want to be a journalist. Oh, I see. A reporter. Unfortunately, there are no openings in the newsroom at this time. And anyway, Ben, you've got to pay your dues. You can't just waltz into the newsroom and take over. Oh, I see. Ben, are you ready to go to work right now? Sure, why not? Good. I want you to do something. What's that? In the newspaper business, we have this silly thing called professional courtesy. That means that after we run an ad, we deliver it to the Morning Star so that they can run it as well. Capiche? I think so. Even though we are competing against the Morning Star, we share some of the same advertisers. So we deliver the advertisements that we have already run to the Morning Star after the paper has been printed. As a courtesy. A professional courtesy. Very good, Ben. However, today we are going to be a little less courteous. <coughs> ben, we need to talk. Yes, Miss Sinclair. Have I done something wrong? Ben, how is my little dispatcher doing? Are you turning into a pit bull? Did you go to the Morning Star like I asked you to? Yes. I went there and I gave them the typewritten copy and the photographs of the full page ad that was to run the next morning. And? And the woman at the Morning Star got mad at me. She wanted to know what happened to the camera ready ad that ran in the Daily News and I told her that I lost it. And? And she starts yelling at me and says that now she has to rebuild the ad from scratch. She said the paper would come out late and that it will cost the Morning Star thousands of dollars in lost press time. She said it was all my fault and accused me of sabotaging the operation. All is fair in love and war, Ben. You did a splendid job. Thank you, Miss Sinclair. At first I felt bad about lying to the Morning Star, but I didn't feel guilty for long. I'll do anything to become a reporter. Anything. 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 Ben, remember when I called you my little boy toy? Well, I meant it. A girl gets so lonely in this business. Nobody respects a woman who has had to claw her way to the top like I have. People think that I'm a monster, but I am not. You seem very nice. Oh. I love you, Ben. I knew that you were the one for me after I read your little story about those homecoming queens. You are going to be the next Bob Woodward. Pitbulls never sleep, Ben. Remember that. I am going to make you a hard news reporter. A hard, hard news reporter. Oh, Miss Sinclair. Tell me what to do and I will do it. Ben, I am having a difficult time dealing with the pressman. <laughs> what is going on in the press room? Those greedy bastards want more money, Ben. Their union is breaking the back of the company. So what do you want me to do about it? Get me security. Get me helicopters. Get me dogs. I want all the pressmen drug tested now. If anybody refuses, tell the Human Resources Department to fire them. If any union representative is found to have even a trace of a pot PC in their urine, fire him. Let all other departments slide but make sure the pressmen are terrified. I have instructed the Human Resources Department to act upon your recommendations, Ben. We have a zero tolerance for drug use here. <laughs> <coughs> oh. 
but Miss Sinclair, I smoke pot. I don't care if you smoke pot like a chimney, Ben. This is not really about drugs and it is not about you. It is about greedy pressmen who do not know their place. Why are you testing for drugs? If you must know, I am doing it so I can break the pressmen's union. It is the only legal way I can fire them. But don't worry, I won't bother you. Man, this whole thing sucks. I can't work under these conditions. You should be ashamed of yourself, Miss Sinclair. You must not talk to me like that, Ben. I love you. Look, if this is about money, I'm sure we can work something out. I am a very generous woman. It's not about money. I can't believe you call this place a newspaper. You'll get used to it. Everybody here does. My mom was right. If it wasn't for the Morning Star, nobody would know what's going on in this town. The Morning Star may not have a comic section or horoscope, but it is a truly great newspaper. Oh Ben, you are so full of shit. The only reason your paper exists is because you are getting tons of cash from your New York corporate offices to cover your massive debt. Don't worry, when the Morning Star is out of the picture everything will be different around here. You should not be trying to destroy the Morning Star. They cover all the local news, fine arts, and sports events. The Morning Star covers marriages, engagements, and bankruptcies. We barely touch the surface. Ben, we are giving Santa Fe exactly what they want. Nobody cares if we print local news or not. Well, the daily news obviously doesn't care anymore. But that's really not the point. Well then, what is your point? Don't you get it? When you work for an asshole, you become an asshole. You don't even see it happening. I can't take it anymore. You can dispatch your own ads. I quit. Well, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I had lost my job at the Daily News and nobody would hire me. Not even the hot dog stand. I wasn't their type. Companies wanted somebody with experience. What was I going to tell them? That I was an experienced boy toy and a pit bull. I was beginning to think I made a mistake by quitting the daily news. So, after an afternoon of rejection I find myself at the Morning Star, a weekly newspaper that is given away for free. I climb the steps and walk into their office. How can I help you? My name is Ben, Ben Hedges. I heard you were looking for a copy editor. Hmm. My name is Dick Maverick. I'm the publisher and managing editor of the Morning Star. Do you have any newspaper experience, Ben? Well, I did write a few stories for my high school paper, but more than that, I've always wanted to work for a Pulitzer Prize winning publication like yours. I see. So you don't have any experience editing copy? Uh, well. Not in editing, but I do know some Tennyson by heart. Tennyson. Alfred Tennyson. Alfred. Lord Tennyson. Why? That changes everything. It does. I wrote my doctoral thesis on Tennyson 20 years ago. My mom says editors don't care if you read poetry. And is your mom an editor? No. Well then, there you are. So, let's hear some Tennyson. A still small voice spake unto me. Thou art so full of misery, were it not better not to be. Then to this still small voice I said, Let me not cast in endless shade what is so wonderfully made. Thine anguish will not let thee sleep nor any train of reason keep. 
thou canst not think, but thou wilt weep. Tis life, whereof our nerves are scant. Oh, life, not death, for which we pan. More life, and fuller, that I want. All right, then, this is highly irregular, but I'll give you a shot. Oh, yeah. Your job will be to compile obituaries, weddings, engagements, and births. You will learn how to make up dummies and write headlines. If we run short-handed, you will make up pages in the production department. And the pay? We will pay you a token wage of $2.25 an hour. Two twenty-five. That's slave wages. You will become an intern then. You're going to get on the job draining from Pulitzer Prize winning professionals. And you are going to get dirt cheap flavor. I don't know about this. And there are benefits. Great. Like vacation time and sick pay. No, but we do stock the coke machine with beer and you can bring your dog to work. Oh, Alright. You win. But I do have one request. What's that? I'd like to write some stories. You know, on the side. Well, okay. No problem. I can let you review the Stakeout Cafe. You get a free dinner if you will write me a 500 word review by tomorrow. Can you handle that? Yes. Gladly. No problem. Excellent. So, are you ready to start working right away? Sure. Alright then, let's start with the Morning Star's design philosophy. Excuse me, Nick. Yes. Did you say you stocked the Coke machine with beer? Yeah, I've been trying to get Budweiser, but the accountant insists on Miller Lite. Anyway, in dealing with the design of the front page, the idea is to keep it simple. Don't try to put 50 pounds of shit in a 10 pound bag. You need to learn to use white space effectively. Does that make sense? I think so. Let's talk about white space after lunch. In the meantime, why don't you walk around the newspaper plant and get to know people? Good idea. Oh my, what do we have here? Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Are you crazy? I know you. You are the dispatcher from the Daily News. You destroyed the advertisement that you were supposed to deliver to us, and we were on deadline. We had to rebuild it from scratch. I'm sorry about this stupid advertisement. That was a terrible thing that I did. <laughs> now you've come here to cause more trouble, haven't you? Have you no decency? I work here. I'm the paper's new copy editor. You are. Damn. Daddy will hire anyone. What about your fancy daily news job? I quit the daily news. I was just following orders. Just following orders? Well, don't mess with me. My dad is the publisher, and I bet you're a spy. Do you know what we do with spies around here, asshole? No. And my name is Ben. We hang them up by their balls and then we pump red ink up their ass. Look, if we're going to be working in the same building, don't you think we should try to get along? Maybe. My name is Jamie. Do you want to go out for dinner after work? I don't know. I'm kind of low on money. Don't worry. I'm buying. Are you planning to take me to the restaurant Daddy is featuring in the food section next week? Yes, I am. Then you're getting a free meal for writing a restaurant review, aren't you, Ben? Yes. There's some truth in what you say. Then don't make it out like you are buying me a meal because you're not. Oh, what the hell, let's go. Right now. Yeah, let's surprise them. Let me get my camera. I'll photograph the place. And oh, by the way, you are a pussy. I am not a pussy. You are a pussy. Anybody can see that. Why are you so mean? Because you work in the office. I work in the press room. Hey, do you have a girlfriend? Why do you want to know? I take that as a no. Have you ever gotten it on with anybody? No. Actually, I'm a virgin. What? I'm a virgin. What the hell's the matter with you? Don't you like girls? No. I'm shy. So, you're shy. 
We can work on that. What needs work? Well, you can start by letting your hair grow out. What's wrong with my hair? Nothing. Actually, you have nice hair, but you look like a geek. Then you can quit your fruitcake job in editorial and go to work in the press room. I think I'm gonna like working in the newsroom. You see, I want to be a reporter. Well, we'll teach you how to get laid. What's more important, becoming a reporter or getting laid? Can it be taught? Fuck yeah, anything can be taught and learned. I mean, so long as you really, really want to learn. I do, but I've got to work upstairs. That's my first priority. Fine. Then how about working in the press room part-time? I've never done any manual labor, Jamie. Don't! Let me see your hands. Just as I suspected. Your hands are as smooth as a girl's. How dare you? What about yours? What about them? Your hands are rough and covered with ink. You should take better care of them. So then, what do you say? About what? About working in the press room. Do you want to? Why do you want me to work in the press room, for God's sakes? I don't know. You could be my pet project. Pet project? Yeah, I could save a rich, white suburban kid from becoming a spoiled brat. I'll make you tough. I'll make a man out of you. And I'll pay you three fifty an hour. Well, you do pay better than your daddy. I don't know. I'll think about it. All right. Think about it. And when you're done thinking about it, you can come work for me. Let's eat. I'm starving. I want to talk to the manager of Paymart. That's me. My name is Maxine Sinclair. I own the Daily News. My name is Ellen Hedges. How can I help you? Are you still advertising with the Morning Star? I don't think that's any of your goddamn business. Why would you advertise with that pathetic excuse for a newspaper? Every smart advertiser in Santa Fe knows the Daily News is the only show in town. That may be the case, but the Morning Star is the only paper that practices serious journalism. I beg your pardon. The Daily News has gone downhill ever since your chain bought it and you took over. How so? Well, for one thing, you fired half the reporters. Who needs those drunks? The news that we can pick up from the National Wire Service is good enough for most people and our circulation has skyrocketed since I took over. That's a laugh. Where do you get these numbers? Maybe you're printing more papers. But who's reading them? What the hell do you think I'm doing? Do you think I'm taking those papers to the dump? Yes, I do. Everyone that I know is cancelling their subscription. Your paper is a rag. I mean, look at the stories that you have been publishing lately. Headless body is found in topless bar. And here's a gem. Is there a ring of debris around your anus? People love that shit. And what about our advertising rates? Where are you going to get ads for what we charge? Miss Sinclair, what will you charge for ads after you drive the Morning Star out of business? <clears throat> You'll charge whatever you want because advertisers will have nowhere else to go. I will not help you create a newspaper monopoly in Santa Fe. I want you to know that I plan to write a letter to your main office. A letter? Yes. Because you don't know how to manage your advertising budget. What business is that of yours? Miss Hedges, I find it unbelievable that Paymart would waste its money on advertisements in the Morning Star. What the hell are you trying to say? Furthermore, I think you're incompetent. Incompetent? What do you mean? I mean the Morning Star is slowly but surely going out of business and you're pouring money into it anyway. If the Morning Star is going down the tubes, it's because you are forcing it out of business. Hey, my chain pulls a lot of weight with Paymart. So what? So what? Listen, if you care about your job, bitch, then drop the Morning Star. And here's something to get your ass in gear, darling. 
Here's a little gift from the Daily News just for you. A thousand dollars. Yes, and that's just the beginning. I'm sorry, Miss Sinclair. I've been under a lot of stress lately. My boy is getting ready to go to college. Your boy? Yes, Ben. Ben Hedges? Yes. You gave him a job. But it didn't work out. You have a very spirited son. He's a good boy. He just doesn't understand the ways of the world. Well then, maybe you can teach him by your sterling example. Good afternoon, Miss Hedges. Call me Ellen. I'll think about our little talk. I'm sure that you will. Data Ellen. How could you do this to me? What did I do? That restaurant review you wrote. The owner just called. What did he want? He was appalled by the table manners of you and your companion. My companion was your daughter. He said your stomachs were bottomless pits and your behavior was rude and obnoxious. Hey, we're growing teenagers. And, to make matters worse, you misspelled his name. No, let me see the paper. Oh my god, I should have been more careful. Jeez, I'm sorry Mr. Maverick. Sorry is not good enough. How the hell do you expect to cover hard news when you can't write a simple restaurant review? I said I was sorry. If I find out that you are soiling the reputation of this fine newspaper, you will be out of a job. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Mr. Maverick. Yes, what do you want now? Do you mind if I walk around the plant for a few minutes? My back's killing me. Go ahead. And be sure to punch out on the time clock this time. I don't pay you to screw around all day. Too much glue. The papers are all sticking together. Don't! This Chingada labeling machine is all fucked up. Daddy and his great ideas. What I need is a doobie big guy. God, I wish I was back in New York City. Why? The kids here think they're such hot shit just because their folks have a lot of money. Every one of them needs to spend a week in the press room. Here, have a drag. No, thanks. I honestly never smoked before. Go ahead. It'll do you good. Be quiet. Daddy just walked in the press room. He's checking up on me. Okay, it's cool. He just left. Damn, this tastes like cheap tobacco. What in the hell is this shit anyway? If you don't go, you won't get off. So, have you given any thought to my little business proposition? Truth is I have been thinking about working down here. My writing career is going nowhere. Great. I'll work it out with Daddy. You'll start work tomorrow. You know, Ben, my dad's an idiot. He stuck a new labeling machine on the assembly line. Like that's going to solve our problems. <laughs> Maybe it will make things more productive around here. My dad once hired an efficiency expert. What did he say? He said what you need to do is take a bulldozer and work your way from the front of the press room to the back. And then start all over. I bet that was not what he wanted to hear. What this place really needs is an air conditioner. When these papers start sticking together, you'll never get out. Do you think he'll put one in? <laughs> oh sure. Right after he installs the walnut paneling and white shag carpeting. Excuse me. I've got to get back to work. Daddy's checking up on me. I know it.
What the hell was that? This machine is fucking up. Why is this machine shredding all the address labels to our out of town subscribers? Because it's a piece of shit. This is a brand new labeling machine, Jamie. And why didn't you stop the machine when it started to screw up? We can't stop production for every address label that does not get glued onto a newspaper properly. Okay, sorry. I'll get out of your way. What now? The timing chain broke on the press. Do we have another one? They stopped making them 20 years ago. So now what do we do? I think I can make one out of a motorcycle chain. Fine. Go to Chicks Harley Davidson and see what you can find. Is there anything else you need, Daddy? Give the bank a call. Have them transfer $5,000 from my savings account to the newspaper's payroll account. There's not much left in your savings account. Really? Yeah, really. You know, Daddy. This whole thing sucks. You really should have sold the paper after Grandpa died, when it was worth something. Jamie, don't talk about things you can't possibly understand. But no, you had to move to the armpit of the nation. I cannot believe you gave up your job at the New York Times for this goddamn rag. We are a Pulitzer Prize winning publication. Why can't you just do what I tell you to do for once? Why does everything have to turn into a battle with you? No problema. I'll call the bank right now and tell them to flush the rest of our money right down the toilet. And oh yeah. What? The electric company called again. They're gonna cut the power if we don't pay our bills. Jesus. I forgot all about them. Turn on your charm and beg them for a few more weeks. I know you've got it in you, somewhere. Also, we just got a call from Paymart. They're dropping us. What? Paymart has decided to no longer advertise in our paper. Understand? After all these years, that does it. Oh. That will be all, Jamie. That'll be all, Jamie. That'll be all, Jamie. Why don't you just get yourself a goddamn secretary? Why don't you get yourself a dress? Why don't you get yourself a life? Why don't you get lost before I kill you? I need to make a phone call. Hello. Hello. May I speak to Maxine Sinclair, please? What an unexpected pleasure. I haven't heard from you in ages. Listen, Maxine, I have got to talk to you in person. How about the plaza at noon? By the old fountain. That's great. See you there. Did you know Maxine Sinclair and I went to Columbia University together? No, I didn't, Daddy. She was top in her class and she was a good reporter. But she sold out when she moved on to work for the Daily News. Don't worry, Daddy. Everything will be okay. I hope so, sweetheart. Dick, it's been too long. How's Jamie? She's a handful. Just turned 18. She's learning how to run the press. Jamie is a smart kid. Pressmen make good money. Actually, I was kinda hoping she'd take a liking to knitting or baking. You're looking good, Dick. You've got a few gray hairs, but they make you look very distinguished. Always the joker. You're busting my balls, Maxine. You're not playing by the rules. What rules? This is business. I'm not supposed to be nice to you. Do you really think you can get away with buying the daily news and driving me out of business? Yes, Dick. Off the record, I do. I've done this many times before. Why? It's my job. I am the hammer and you're gonna get nailed. Don't get me wrong. I greatly admire your work. And those sexy muscles aren't bad either. Look, I was thinking. We both have our special talents. You're the best reporter in the business. And you're the best businessman around. Combine our talents and we'll make a hell of a team. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. It's a marriage made in heaven, Dick. So then, 
Are you really willing to scrap your operation and come the board? I'll make you managing editor. That's not what I had in mind. And what, pray tell, did you have in mind? A joint operating agreement. We would share advertising, circulation and business operations, but each one of us will have a separate newsroom. There's room in this town for two papers, Maxine. You don't have to be the only show in town. If it was up to me, I'd say fine. But it's not acceptable to the chain. I thought you had some sense in you. I'm out of here. Good luck. No, wait. Listen. Under a joint operating agreement, we both make lots of money and I can still give this town an alternative editorial voice. I don't give a flying fuck about that. Okay. Let me try again. Under a joint operating agreement, a lot of very good people get to keep their jobs. I don't care about them either. Well, then. What do you care about? The chain, Nick. And the chain wants the Morning Star dead. Not a joint operating agreement. They want you dead. Jesus, Maxine. You've already got a million dollar art collection, a Learjet, a penthouse suite, and a chauffeured limousine. What more can a person possibly want? Nothing personal, Dick, but I do have my orders. Haven't you heard? A newspaper monopoly is illegal in this country. You'll never get away with it. So sue me. Now that's a good idea. Maybe I will. Wait a minute, Dick. Yes. That was only a figure of speech. A joint operating agreement is not on the table, but there is another way out of this. And what might that be? I will write you a check for one million dollars, if you will just stop your presses for good. You're offering me a million dollars? Yes. For the building. The presses, your debts, your inventory, everything. So, now you want to pay me off so that you can be the only newspaper in Santa Fe. What do you say, Dick? What about my people? Will you guarantee them jobs? No way, forget it. I'm running a business, not a retirement home for burned out and broken down newspaper men. Is that how you regard my people? What the hell do you care what I think? Just take the money and run. Or cut them severance checks if you feel sorry for them. I'm offering you a million dollars. No. You're offering me blood money. My people don't want severance checks. They're not your problem. I owe my employees everything, Maxine. And all they ask in return is steady work. It's their life. You've done your best. Now get out while you still can, with dignity and a little cash. No. Face it. The days of the small, independent, hometown newspaper are over. This town does not want some giant East Coast company feeding them wire copy. They want hard-hitting local news, arts and sports. Stories you just won't cover. Sorry, Maxine. No deal. Fine. Have it your way. And so I began working with Jamie in the press room. My job was to stack newspapers on a wooden pallet after they rolled off the press and I did this for 15 hours a day. The noise was deafening, the work was boring and it was hotter than hell. I hate this fucking job. We're never getting out of here. Daddy doesn't give a shit. Alright, take a break. It's time to smoke a big, fat doopy Jamie. Do you want to get high? Hey you little moron. The door swings both ways at the morning star. If you keep smoking that marijuana I will fire you. There is a time and place for everything and I swear to god that this is most definitely not the time to smoke that shit. You seemed eager to smoke with me the other day. What's the difference? That was then. This is now. Things have changed. This sucks. Just because I get paid shit down here doesn't give you the right to treat me like a piece of shit. Look Ben, I'm your boss now. You do what I say, understand? I don't know what's the matter with you suburban boys these days. 
I'm just a teenage girl and I bet I can still outwork and outfuck anybody here. So what do you want? A medal? No, I just want you to do your job. Now let's get going, big boy. I do the best I can. I'm sorry if I don't meet your expectations, but... But what? I'm not used to working around such big, noisy machines. Sometimes I think the press is gonna take my hand right off. It will if you're not careful. The press doesn't care if there's a newspaper or your hand under it. And other times I get hot and tired and I want to leave and say fuck this shit. I just don't care anymore. That's because you just started. It's not easy to break into the shop routine. Especially when you are so out of shape. I am not out of shape. You are. You're thin and you're weak and you don't have any stamina. <laughs> Oh, come on now. Don't cry. But you're getting stronger every day. Soon you'll be just as tough as me. Do you always have to be so manly? Can't you just be sweet and gentle for once? Maybe I can. And maybe I can't. Anyway, this ain't the time or the place to sort this out. Come on, we're holding up production. Go ahead. Start up the press. press is really messed up now. This is going to take a while to fix. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Daddy told me that he wants to see you in his office. You better go now, while I fix this piece of shit press. Ben Hedges, you are looking at a desperate man. So this probably wouldn't be a good time to ask for a raise. No, it would not. Ben, you've been here six weeks. Do you like it here? Mr. Maverick, I love this newspaper. Call me Dick. Why do you like it here? I think Joseph Pulitzer would have been proud to work here. I like your spirit, Ben, and I like the proofreading and the obituaries that you've been writing lately. I also like the fact that you've been working in the press room with Jamie. Thank you, Dick. I feel lucky to be working with her. She's very cool. I want you to know how proud I am that you are on my staff in the newsroom. You are? Yes. We have great expectations of you. You do? You are very talented. I am. After a rocky start, you have learned to set down names, places, dates and events accurately. You never come in late and you never miss a deadline. Ben, I think your time has come. It has. Ben, I have the biggest story of my life brewing and I can't cover it. I need your help. What's the story? I need to find out what's been going on at the Daily News since Maxine Sinclair bought it two months ago. You know, Dick, I worked there for a while. No, I didn't know that. What exactly did you do at the Daily News? I worked in this patch. And what did you think of the place? I think Sinclair's a crook. What do you mean? She was careful not to document anything and then she had a run-in with the manager of Paymart, who happens to be my mother. Well, that's convenient. Do you think that you can arrange a little meeting between your mother and myself? I would like to talk to her, please. Sure, no problem. Why don't you just stop over at my house this evening at about 7? We'll be expecting you. Thank you so much, Ben. I'll be there. Thank you for agreeing to see me, Mrs. Hedges. It's my pleasure. And I must tell you how grateful I am that you gave Ben a job. He's grown so much since he started working at the Morning Star. You've made a real mensch out of him. Ben's a good boy and a hard worker. We're very glad to have him as part of our little family. But I didn't come here to talk about Ben. I came here to talk to you about your job at Paymart. Oh, I don't work there anymore. They fired me. I'm sorry. What happened? That lady who runs the Daily News. Maxine Sinclair. Yes, that's her. 
She came over to the store and tried to bribe me. You must be joking. She offered me a thousand dollars to stop advertising in your paper. And you said no. Actually, I took the money because I really needed it. Times have been so difficult. I understand. But I had a change of heart the next morning and returned the money. Maxine got very angry. She called my boss at Paymart and said I was trying to blackmail her. She said I threatened to bomb her newspaper plant unless she paid me a thousand dollars. Well, I don't see how she could prove that. It's her word against yours. There was a security camera rolling when she handed me that money. The tapes were reviewed and I was fired. That's terrible. Sinclair used to send the advertising department free tickets to theater and sports events. We didn't see any harm in using them, but now I can see she was just softening us up. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's difficult to turn down something that's free, especially when it's given to you by somebody you think is a friend. I'm so sorry, Mr. Maverick. Call me Dick. I tried so hard to defend your paper. I tried to make management realize that you were good for our town. But in the end I took the bribe. Well, in the end you returned the bribe. We all have our moments of weakness. Is there anything I can do to make up for the damage I have caused? Yes, there is. What's that? I want you to sit down and tell your son everything that you've told me. I think he can write an excellent story about how Maxine Sinclair broke federal laws and tried to destroy the Morning Star. What should I say? Tell Ben everything. That should do it, I think. I wish I could write the story myself, but I just don't have the time. I'll do what I can, Dick. The Morning Star was born on this old flatbed pressed by my grandfather 100 years ago. He passed it on to my dad. Last year, when my father died, I left my job at the New York Times to keep the paper going. I have failed the company miserably. The Morning Star will cease publication after today's issue, Ben. Don't give up, Dick. All good things must come to an end. I have already built the front page of our last edition. It reads good by Santa Fe. I can't believe my ears. All the money I have left in the world has been divided into severance checks. Our longest, most loyal employee will receive a check for $9,000. I think you should reconsider. There's nothing to reconsider. The company is broke. There's no more money. But what about the story you asked me to write? What story? I interviewed my mom about Paymark and I did a lot of research about the daily news. Then I wrote a story about how they were trying to destroy you by using every illegal tactic in the book. I had no idea you could write hard news. Let me see that story. <laughs> I can't believe it. You really seem to have nailed it. I did my research, Dick. You taught me everything I know and I brought it all home. Hot damn. You even got the stuff about monopolies right. You know I've been in the business 30 years. Never said it once. You mean? Yes. Stop the presses. Stop the presses. This is an excellent piece of writing, Ben. I'm so proud of you. Your article has gotten the whole town stirred up. Now everybody hates the daily news and wants the morning star to survive. I love the way you quoted the judge at the trial of Maxine Sinclair. The judge said, <clears throat> Miss Sinclair, your chain has acted no better than the oil barons of the 1900s. If anything, this case is worse because of the moralistic cloak in which the daily news wraps itself. Maxine said, Your Honor, we are a business, like any other. And the judge said, <clears throat> You are wrong. The business of putting out a newspaper is like no other business. I would not weep about a shoe factory or a branch line railroad shutting down. But newspapers are different. And Sinclair said, Your Honor, your romantic view of newspapers does not change the laws of economics, to which we must all submit. 
And then the judge said, Miss Sinclair, you have made it impossible for the Morning Star to exist. You shut them out of the game. I find you in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act as well as the Newspaper Preservation Act of 1970. I rule in favor of the Morning Star. Both papers now must learn to get along so that we can continue to have two separate editorial voices in Santa Fe. <laughs> You are out of order. The judgment is final. Miss Sinclair, if you don't like it, might I suggest an editorial in tomorrow's Daily News? Hey Ben, have you thought of getting out of this hell hole and going to college? Not really. Do you think I should? If you want to get a girlfriend, you have got to go to college. That's what it's for. You can't imagine what's walking around on those campuses. Oh, yeah. Something for everyone. Even you. Get out of this cow town, man. Have fun for a change. I do have fun, just hanging out with you. You know, I've been meaning to say something to you for some time. Yes. I've been meaning to tell you something, but I just don't know how to say it. Just say it. I want to say it, but I just can't say it. If you don't say it, I'm going to kick your ass. Okay. Here goes. Jamie, I love you. I love you so much it hurts. I know you love me and I like you. No, I actually do love you but I don't love you like that. Anyway, I think you should know that I'm leaving town soon. No, no, no. Yup. My dad's calling it quits. He's had all the fun he can stand. He's saved the Morning Star and now we're going back to the New York Times and I'm going with him. The Morning Star's up for sale. Oh, come on. Who's gonna buy the dump? We're replacing all the presses, the bindery equipment, everything. You can't leave. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you to get all upset. You know how you are. You taught me so much. About things. Things that really matter. Like hard work and friendship. Don't you understand? I don't want you to go. Look, I like you, Ben. I like you a lot. But this just ain't in the stars. You deserve a nice girl who will take care of you and feed you. I'm not the one. You know, you've taught me a few things too. What's that? Well, you taught me that a guy and a girl can be friends, good friends, without sex. Before I met you, I thought that sex was the only thing guys think about. Now I know I was wrong. Oh yeah. Ben, I want you to know that you are the best friend I ever had. Really? Hey, I've got something for you. What's that? Here. It's the first Spider-Man. I want you to have it. Oh man, you didn't have to do that. Hang on to it. Someday it'll be worth a fortune. Maybe so, but you'll never see me sell it. That's good. And oh yes, Ben. I have something for you as well. You do? Come here, baby. Oh wow, where you learned to kiss like that. To be honest, it wasn't from boys. I'm a lesbian Joe. You and I, it would never work out I'm afraid. Well, speak of the devil. It's Maxine Sinclair. I've got to talk to your dad. I'll catch you later. Hi, Miss Sinclair. What brings you to the Morning Star? I've come to say goodbye to your father. Are you going someplace? I have lost the paper. You got to find five million dollars. Pocket change. Shoot, you'll probably just appeal the decision. No, the Santa Fe Daily News has been taken away from me. How is that possible? The previous owner of the Daily News, the person who sold me the paper, just filed suit for breach of contract. Says I destroyed his paper and lost him thousands of readers. He wants the paper back. Won't you fight it? What's to fight? He's right. 
I did destroy his paper. I'm tired of fighting. I'm cutting my losses. I want out. The chain wants out. Coming here has been one huge miscalculation. Where are you headed? Anywhere but here, kid. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. I've got a question for you. What's that? You and my dad, you were pretty close when you were in college. I was just wondering. What were you wondering? Are you my mother? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Give me a break. Do I strike you as somebody who could give birth to a child who turned out as good as you? I don't know. I was just asking. Well, hold that thought for a few years. Let's talk about it again when you're 21, okay? It's a deal. To be honest, I'm not sure I really want to know. Good. Let's keep it at that. Take it easy, kid. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye. So, where were we? You were telling me you were going to join a monastery. No. Yes. You said you wanted to live a life of celibacy. No. You said, and I quote, the worldly life is not for me. I did not. Then, you don't want to be a virgin anymore. I do not. You want to get a girlfriend, don't you? I guess so. Then listen to me. You have just got to get laid or you're gonna go crazy. And then, college is the perfect place to make it happen. You don't want to hang around this fucking newspaper forever, do you? Even if I went to college, I still wouldn't know what to say, or what to do. Oh, sure you would. You've got it down. But, let's start again from the beginning. You need to let your hair grow out. Why? You've got a nice head of hair. Besides, I thought you said you wanted to get a girlfriend. I did. Thank you.